Welcome back to some extended coverage of the Caribbean Premier League, an extra over of CPL coverage here on the CNC3 7 p.m. news. I want to welcome to the show now, I have the distinct pleasure of welcoming two-time Australian World Cup winner Tom Moody. He's back here in the Caribbean, back here in Trinidad and Tobago, joins us via Zoom. Tom, thanks so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. Uh, Tom, you've been to many a CPL tournaments. Uh, what have you made of this one? <laughs> Well, this one's just a little bit different for us all, to be fair. Um, you know, obviously from, uh, you know, our supporters, our fans, it's very different because what we've experienced over the years is such a strong support around the Caribbean from all the various islands that the Caribbean Premier League is hosted. Um, so that's very different because of current circumstances. Obviously, from the players' perspective, it's very different having to go through a quarantine process and have limited... Uh, exposure to, to, to preparation um, in, you know, pr you know, pr uh, practice facilities and things like that because of the restrictions, uh, and having the tournament itself just on one island. Uh, thankfully, uh, here in Trinidad, we've got two venues that we that we're using: the Brian Lara uh, Cricket Academy and Queens Park. So that's sort of taken a little bit of pressure off the two venues. But yeah, look, it's it's a completely different experience for us all, but. I'm just very grateful and I know everyone involved in the in the CPL are very grateful that we've got a tournament up, up and running. Has that helped or hurt this tournament from your experience? Uh, look, I think um, only time will tell uh, to whether, it, you know, what the long-term effect is. But what I can tell you is that uh, the cricket that's being beamed out of the Caribbean at the moment, out of Trinidad at the moment, is is reaching more living rooms uh, and more homes than it ever has done historically. So it, I think that tells you two things. It tells you one, uh, you know, out there in the world, people are desperate for live sport and desperate for, uh, you know, the game that they're passionate about. And, and, and secondly, the, the, the fact that, uh, you know, there is, uh, there is a real need for the game to, to to continue to grow here in the Caribbean, and, and it, it I think it bodes well to how robust the Caribbean League is now, and how well it's respected around uh, the cricketing fraternity. Big week for the Trinbago Knight Riders. Big start to the tournament for TKR. Tom, Dwayne Bravo uh, went past 500 T20 wickets this week. First cricketer in the world to do so. Uh, is he the best all-rounder to play the shortest format of the game? I uh, oh, look again. I, I'm not in a position to be w wanting to pitch him as the best of all time because I think you know once you have those discussions, you really need a long debate around who you're comparing him with. You know, we've seen over uh, the times uh, many wonderful all-rounders. Just one recently got inducted into the ICC Hall of Fame in Jacques Callas. Um, so, you know, I don't think re I don't think there's a debate around who's the best and who's not. Um, I think what we can discuss uh, and celebrate is a remarkable performance and a re remarkable milestone that uh, Dwayne Bravo has achieved. You know, 500 wickets. Who would have ever, ever thought that someone's going to take 500 wickets in this format of the game and do it uh, in the fashion that he's done it? He's, he's created a niche for himself as a specialist finisher, and he's done that very well, not only here for TKR, but he's done that as he's you know, he's gone around the globe mm -hmm. applying his skills. When you look at the CPL tournament this year and you see what the top of the table looked like in terms of mm. the TKR mm. team, St. Lucia Zook's doing well this season, but then you have St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots really struggling at the bottom. Are you, uh, as someone who travels to big franchise leagues around the, the world, BBL, IPL, CPL, uh, are you satisfied as a former international cricketer as well with all your expertise over the balance of the CPL tournament and, and the franchises in this tournament? Yeah, look, it, I think it, it's been reasonably well balanced. We, we had, again, um, everyone thought at the beginning of last year, 2019, that it was going to be, you know, you know, the Knight Riders year once again. And let's face it, they do boast a very strong list. Um, there's no question of that. But... You know, we were, you know, pleasantly surprised to see, you know, the Tridents come up and, and uh, I, I suppose, trounce not only uh, the Knight Riders, but the favoured uh, Guyana Warriors. So, 
you know, I still think that there is that unpredictability, um, unpredictability with it. There's no doubt that um, that a couple of the sides on paper look a little bit stronger than others. Uh, but looking at the Patriots, look, they've had a disappointing start to this campaign, and I think that they've had a number of setbacks, which has made it challenging for them. They, they in the original draft, they had a, um, a couple of South Africans that mm-hmm. that uh, really affected their Shamsi, yeah. their list management. So they had to make some late replacements, which is difficult, particularly in these times that they were currently in. Uh, and also with Fabian Allen yeah. uh, absence from the tournament, yeah. you know that that is just a, a massive uh, blow for a side uh, like the Patriots. That such a pivotal player like Fabian Allen really does throw your balance. You know, the CPL tournament is the first T20 franchise league to take place since the pandemic started. Others will follow. IPL will follow. BBL will follow. You're, you're going to be part of those, most likely. Uh, what lessons do you think IPL and BBL will be looking on here in the Caribbean and be trying to implement in their own leagues? Yeah, look, I think like like we have, we've adopted a lot of the uh, philosophies and, and process that's been put in place uh, in England. They were the first to start this sort of uh, biosecure bubble um, cricket and... I think we're going to continue to learn as organisations to make it more streamlined, more successful. Uh, and I suppose, uh, you know, as least a burden on the players during this difficult time. Uh, but I think the reality is, is that, and look, I'm no medical expert, but I, I think we're going to be faced with this type of um, environment in our sport for, for many months to come. Mm-hmm. So we all have to, as spectators, players, administrators, uh, just get used to it. This is the new normal at the moment. Uh, it is challenging. It is very different. But at the end of the day, uh, as long as everyone can remain safe uh, in in the environment and we provide some entertainment, much needed entertainment, lifting spirits around people around the globe, that's all we can do. Half the tournament or at least half the round robin stage uh, of the tournament done, Tom. Mm. Almost half anyway. TKR out front on 10 points, a perfect 10 points from five matches. Uh, yep. But then again, you can look back at the Guyana Amazon Warriors season last year and you say, you know, you can do so well in the one match that matters. If you don't win that, you don't win the title. What factors yep. do you think uh, will be imperative uh, or, or really will guide who wins this tournament, the eventual winner? What are the factors do you think will contribute to that? Yeah, look, it's a, it's a good question. I think we, we've seen, particularly at Queen's Park, that you know, playing of spin is going to be, you know, very, very important and, and team's ability to not only bowl spin effectively, but to play it effectively. Uh, so far, you know, I'd have to say that we haven't seen it so far in the tournament where it has been played well. And I think a lot of it, to, in the defence of the players, I think a lot of that's to do with the fact that they've been starved of cricket, so they haven't had that match practice. And, and playing that sort of uh, type of... Um, bowling can be very challenging, even if you're in full swing uh, in a tournament and, and up and running. So I think that go, as going going forward is going to continue to challenge the players is their ability to play spin. I think the teams that do it the best will, will bode well come the finals. And as you say, there's no guarantee just because you're winning the, the league games that you're going to, you know, you're going to get through the semi-final or the final. So I wouldn't be writing off any team just as yet. Um, we know that tournament cricket is about momentum and any team can pick that momentum up towards the back end of the back end of the tournament and steamroll through to the finals. You know, Tom, this CPL is much more than just a three-week, four-week tournament for many of these cricketers. Many of these cricketers on the field are trying to make a statement to their selectors back home and some, many right mm-hmm. here in the Caribbean to the selectors ahead of the Men's T20 World Cup potentially next year in India. Uh, from what you've seen on the field of players, specifically to the West Indian crop of players that have been participating in this league, uh, what's the talent looking like uh, from, the, from the West Indians in the CPL? Uh, and what are the potential chances of a West Indies win uh, in the Men's T20 World Cup next year? Well, we know, you know, West Indies are very well suited to this format. You know, they boast uh, some of the best T20 players in the world and they... You know they are world cup champions in this form format so i think they're as good a chance as any team to, to be there come finals time you know during the world cup next year it's, that's a long way away mind you uh, but there's a lot of players that 
uh, are, I suppose, shuffling to, you know, to, to prove their dominance in this format of the game. You've you got the usual suspects like Nicholas Poran and Shimron Hepmeyer um, are always going to be players that are challenging. But, you know, I quite like the, you know, the, the outsiders like your Carrie Pierre's, but those type of cricketers that suddenly uh, presenting themselves as, you know, genuine possibilities for uh, the selectors to consider them in their in their balance. Now, given that the tournament's being played in India, uh, they're going to have to consider the balance of their side and what that looks what that looks look what it looks like. And are they going to carry a spinning all rounder, or are they going to go with your chemo Paul type all rounder? Can they afford to have both? Uh, are they going to go left field and and bring out of near near on retirement F uh, Fidel Edwards? That's you know showing that he's still got a bit of sting in his tail. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens over the next six months. But you're right, performances in this tournament are crucial to all the players' quest to secure a position in that World Cup squad. I just want to end by asking you, Tom, a very important question. It's a little bit off CPL, uh, but I'll ask it anyway. Uh, like I mentioned, I think off camera, I'm, I'm a big fan of your Pitside Experts podcast along with uh, Ian Bishop and Freddie Wilde. Uh, and in that, up to your latest podcast, which was released this week, uh, you talked about yep. the importance of T20 cricket, not discarding test cricket. You did not, just to make that clear, you, you never said anything about yeah. discarding test cricket, but you spoke to the importance of the revenue stream in T20 cricket. Looking post-pandemic, or at least cricket uh, within this uh, next six to 12 months during this pandemic, how important will franchise leagues be to the sport of cricket and to re-energizing the sport of cricket? Because like you said, this tournament is being beamed mm. to 100 million viewers around the world yeah. who have been starved of cricket, who've been starved of entertainment. Yeah, look, I think, I think it's absolutely critical. We, we all know that over... Uh, various generations, the revenue stream of our game has changed and evolved. Uh, we saw in the 70s, the 80s, it was World Series cricket, it was Packers cricket that regenerated the game and, and created an enormous amount of revenue. And if not, was the, the beginning of what we're seeing with T20 cricket. And T20 cricket is the, is the same. It's nearly been handed the baton as one of the, the biggest revenue streams for the game. It, and we need the game needs to continue to generate money, so we can continue, you know, we can continue as as cricket bodies to invest in the development of the game and the grassroots of the game. So, without that revenue, uh, without franchise cricket being played, and without World Cups being played, the revenue dries up. Therefore, our development of our game, uh, which is so important at grassroots is is starved and we can't afford that to happen because we want to continue to grow this game not only in the established cricketing countries but the emerging cricketing countries as well tom we're really lucky that you made the trek all the way from australia to come to the caribbean to give us some analysis on this cpl tournament and it's even more lucky that you agreed to do this interview thank you so much i really appreciate it yeah my pleasure ryan thank you thank you we're going to take a quick break here on the CNC3 7 p.m. News and extra coverage of CPL this uh, tonight. We're going to be right back.